uh, I said, you don't know nothing about this, but in my generation, when the weather looks like this, they put on what you call a pot. And then the pot, you put on brisket, or, or if you had a roast, you cut it up like stew, mm -hmm. and stew it down and put some carrots and potatoes, yeah. and if you had string beans or whatever, and it's almost like a soup, but better. Yeah. And, it, and so I said, wow, I wish I had a pot. When the weather's like that, you just keep going in the pot right. and getting you a little bit in a little right. bowl, right. break off a little piece of cornbread. Y'all young folk don't know nothing yeah. about that. But yeah, yeah. yesterday was like a pot, pot weather. And today we're going to have a pot. We're going to have a pot, a mixture of word and revelation from the body or today that's going to feed us, it's going to bless us. Yeah. So I want you to make ready to receive them. Yeah. They already know their assignments and they are ready yeah. to move in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lift your hands yeah. and say, Lord, Lord we, release them. we release them and the anointing, and the anointing that's anointing. on their lives, that, on their lives. that this house, that this house will, be blessed. will be blessed. Amen. I believe it on this morning that God is releasing his word to the congregation. Amen. So we're going to start off with Deaconess Debbie Taylor and the rest of you flow right behind her. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise, God. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. the Lord. I am I'm really just overwhelmed by God and the things that He is doing in my life. And I am so grateful Amen. for this opportunity to stand before you. Um, knowing where God has brought me from. I, I just feel like the love of God is miraculous yes it is um mm -hmm. overwhelming yeah and i'm so is. grateful that i know him that he is in my life that he lives on the inside of me yes. and he decided that i was worthy Amen. to send his only begotten son to die for me i bless Amen. god for dr diane clark and Amen. Our Amen. Our yes. Word and revelation that she pours so freely into us has brought us all to a new place, and I'm I'm just blessed to know her, and I bless God for each and every one of you. Um, the message that the Lord gave me was, "How is live life? We have received an abundance of word and instructions and directions about what we are to do in this season." God has given us uh, uh, a covenant, and he's given us instructions about how we are the new freed. He's given us instructions about inflating our four tires and making sure that we are ready to move, that we are the vehicles of God, and that he is moving us forward in him. And the word has just been so rich, but this is, uh, I think, a time for us to take the word and apply it to our lives and do what it says. So the acronym that God gave me is Live Life. So I begin with the letter L and the first word, leave the past behind. My God. Second Corinthians 5 and 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Right. We are the new creation that God has created, and we need to recognize that and go with it. Mm -hmm. Romans 6 and 6 tell us, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that is Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So leave sin behind. Mm -hmm. Let go of everything that might separate you from the love and the presence of God, mm -hmm. whether it be unforgiveness, bitterness, remorse, regret, defeat, failure, whatever it is, consider ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old, Isaiah 43 mm -hmm. and 18. So we, we must depart, we must move away from our past and go forward in God. Mm -hmm. Letter I, 
increase your understanding. Yes. Proverbs 3 and 5 tells us to trust in the Lord with all of thy heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Psalms 11, 111 and 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. We know that we are blessed when we do the commandments of the Lord because he says that that's the way that we show that our, our love for him is that we obey his word. Yes. So if we obey his word and do his commandments, we are showing him and our others that are looking on our lives that we love the Lord. It's not just a matter of word. Uh, it's a deed and an action. You have to put some action to the word. Proverbs 4 and 5 tells us to get wisdom, get an understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. This was Solomon speaking to his son, I believe, and he was telling, giving him um, insight and wisdom about how to go about life. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all that understanding, it was all that getting, get an understanding. So we know that wisdom, without wisdom, we will fail. Sometimes when we try to do it on our own, we end up in a heap of a mess. And we have to go back to God and ask him to give us guidance and direction as to which way we should go. Get on the right track, get back on the right path, and then do it again. V value the giftings that God value the giftings that God has given you. Sometimes we um, we don't value what the Lord has placed in us. We're looking at everyone else and saying, "I wish I could sing. I wish I could pray like that. I wish I could preach like they do." Value what God has given you. Surely it is a treasure. James 1 and 17 tells us that every good and perfect gift is from above, and it comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variancing, neither shadow of turning. So God is faithful. He knows exactly what we need. He knows exactly what he desires to put in our lives so that we can do that that we are called to do. For each of us have a particular assignment and a particular thing that God would have us to do on this earth. And what mine is does not look like yours. We work together because we are the body of Christ and we are jointly fitted together but we are individuals and we are unique in our giftings and our callings. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. True. John 4 and 10 tells us, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me a drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So if you like the understanding or the wisdom, ask of God, and he will freely and liberally give it to you. Live life. Letter E, effectually and fervently pray. James 5 and, 5 and 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for the no another that you may be healed. We, the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We must pray the word of God. If you don't know it, if it's not freely flowing in you, write it down. Get you a scripture, but pray the word. Pray the word that applies to your particular situation and your circumstance and watch God move. His hand will move. Mm -hmm. I, I heard Dr. Clark say one time, if things have not moved in your life, it's because you haven't gotten in his presence. Mm. Sometimes we feel like, you know, we, we're going through the motion and we're coming to church and we're doing everything we know how to do, but we haven't really let go of ourselves. We haven't really come naked before God and said, this is where I am and this is my situation and I need your help. He is faithful to help us when we call on him. Yeah. Philippians 4 and 6. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your requests known unto God. And 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 tells us to pray without ceasing. So we are to always pray. And my prayer is not going to sound like your prayer. And it's not so much about how many words I say or how eloquently I can deliver those words, right. but it's about the connection that I have yes. with God. Right. 
and his Holy Spirit praying through me. When I make that connection, I am praying exactly what the Lord wants me to. Yes. That is live. The next word is life. L. Love God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Love your neighbor as yourself. John 13 and 34 tells us, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, yes. if you have love one for another. Yes. So we know that love is not just a word to be said, but it is also something that needs to have action right. and energy put behind it love one another, be concerned about another person's situation or their um, cares in life. Lift them, encourage them, speak life and not death. I identify, identify who you are in Christ. This is, this is a big one and we receive plenty of word on our identity in Christ. So simply, I said Galatians 2 and 20, I am crucified with Christ. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I live, mm -hmm. but the life that I live is not of me, it is through God mm -hmm. who lives on the inside of yes. me. Yes. So Ephesians 2 and 5 tells us we are alive with Christ. John 1 and 12, Christ has given unto us the power to become sons of God. So we are the sons of God, and we um, are to look like him. He's, our God is holy, yes. so we should be holy. holy. Mm -hmm. Romans 3 and 22, we are the righteousness of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 and 2, we are free from the law of sin and death. <laughs> Romans 5 and 17, we reign as kings in this life by Jesus Christ. <laughs> We have God's DNA, yes. and we know that that stands for divine nature ability. God has given us his DNA, so therefore we should reflect him in the earth. We should look like him. In Romans 8, we know that there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Sometimes we find ourselves um, condemning our own selves and putting us, ourselves in a place lower than where we should be because of things and choices that we have made and we feel guilty or ashamed or overwhelmed by those things. But if we would just release it and pour it out to the Lord, he would lift that from us. Faith. Faith in God. We must believe and serve the one true God. He is Father in cre creation, Son in redemption, Holy Ghost in dwelling. He lives on the inside of us. That word. He yeah. is one true living yeah. God. There is no other. Ephesians 4 and 6 says, One God and one Father of yes. all who is above all and through all in you all. So he, he resides in all of us that have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Yes. 1 Corinthians 8 and 6 says, But to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things. We must remember that God is our source, and his supply is inexhaustible. inexhaustible. It is available on demand. If the flow is not continual in your life, you need to check your connection. God does not want us to settle for the basic plan, but he wants us to have a premium plan. That's right. He wants us to upgrade our life so that it reflects his glory. He wants to look down on us and see the glory reflecting back to him. John 10 and 10 says that I have come that you might have life and that yes. life more abundantly. Yes. That is the reason that Jesus came to this earth for us to redeem us back to our Father. Amen. We know that everything God has for us is in Jesus Christ. Yes. And you are worthy to receive everything that he has for you. Sometimes we decide that we're not worthy and we're not worth it. Well, he thought we were worth it. He died for us. Yes. yes. So we need to yes. think more highly of ourselves. Yes. So the letter E says, elevate your mind. 
Think about what you're thinking about. <laughs> Philippians 2 and 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So if you have the mind of Christ, there will be no space for doubt. There will be no space for unbelief. There will be no space for wavering or going back and forth. You have to make a decision that you're going to believe the word regardless of what the situation or the circumstance is that is around you. I choose to believe what God says about me and not what man says about me. Amen. Philippians 4 and 18. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. For God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So if we're thinking on positive, good things and a good report of the Lord, we're not going to be negative, critical, doubting. Uh, we're just going to be uh, happy and positive. And uh, that happiness is not an emotion. Right. It's right. the joy of the Lord that bubbles up in our soul yes. when we make that connection. So let us turn to Isaiah 55. I would like us to, to read that scripture together if we can. <clears throat> Isaiah 55 O oh, everyone that thirsts come ye to the waters and he that hath no money come ye buy and eat yea come buy wine and milk without money and without price wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfieth not Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And one, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Bless the Lord. We have been given a commandment to seek the Lord while he may be found. We were also told that we should arise and shine for the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. The winds of change are blowing in this house, in this ministry, and we've got to be ready to go forward in God. Yes. We must impregnate ourselves with the word of God and we reproduce what we see. Are you ready? Is your connection sure? Oh, yeah. And do you have the premium package? <laughs> All right. Good. Praise the Lord. Sister Debbie pretty much summed up uh, my message today, what the Lord gave me. I'm going to give a little bit of an illustration. The title would be um, God's Reflection. We're going to talk a little bit in Genesis 29. And it talks about, the, we know that the lesson that has um, gone forth is to, about the watering hole and how the animals came they would bring the animals to the watering hole uh, to drink and how they would gaze into the, whatever they would see in the watering hole, they would duplicate that or replicate what is seen in the watering hole. Amen. So as I studied this message, God showed me an illustration of the saints or the, the um, people of God going to the watering hole. So in the beginning, when God, when we were born to your natural parents, to your mom and dad, whether they had red eyes, blue hair, 
wide nose, big head, small feet, whatever that was, that was your identity when you were born. So when you were born, that's the only thing that you knew. You knew your mom fed you, so you knew that that was your identity. Whatever your parents gave you, whatever, if your dad was a longshoreman, then most of the time the sons would be longshoremen. So that would be your identity. So when we were, when we were first born, this is what we saw. When we looked into a mirror, this is the reflection that you saw. Is that not correct? So whatever you see in this mirror, that's what you were when you were first born. Now when we became born again and we received a new DNA, this picture that you see now is not what you saw when you were born, when you were first born. So Genesis 29 talks about the watering hole. So this is your watering hole right here. This is your reflection when you're first born. Go ahead, sis. Now according to Genesis 1 and 27, from a visual angle, Genesis 1 and 27 says, that God created man in his image, and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And when he came, and, and we came into this world with that identity, even though God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So when you look at the mirror when you were first born, you were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. So that's what you saw when you looked in this mirror, sin and iniquity. So when we became born again, we accepted Christ as our Savior. He came and died for us. He died on the cross, and when he died for us, his death and resurrection gave us an identity. So then we became a part of the family of God, yeah. which was our original identity before we came into this world of sin and iniquity. So we came out of God in the beginning, born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Christ came died, redeemed us, mm -hmm. gave us a family, God became our father, Jesus became our elder brother. Mm -hmm. So we're a part of a family now. Amen. And God is the head of that family. Amen. So if by God being the head of that family, he gave us identity. He gave us his name, he gave us identity. So, we still didn't know exactly who our father was. We didn't know the characteristics of our father. So let's talk about some of those characteristics. Because if he's our father, then we're supposed to be like him in the earth. Amen. So our God is loving. And in, first, and in John 3.16, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we have a loving God. And because we have a loving God, if we're going to be like our Father, then we have to become loving. That's right. Amen. That's right. We say, Lord, I want to be like you. I want to represent you or represent you in the earth. Well, our God is loving, so we have to have love. He drew with love and kindness, and we're going to have to draw. And I tried to get away from that so much. I said, God, we already know that we're supposed to love people, and that's how you drew us, and that's how we're supposed to draw others. But he says to say that today. Through love and kindness, he drew you. So through love and kindness, you have to draw others. And you have to do it with intent. 
because it doesn't come naturally some, for some of us. It doesn't come naturally, but God says, and we have his DNA in us so that we are capable of doing it. We just have to do it with intent. Just like uh, Elder Faith said in Bible study on Tuesday, we got to think about what we think about. That means intently think what you want to manifest in your life. So if you want to be sick, then think about being sick. <laughs> and I guarantee you, it will manifest in your life. <laughs> so we need to think about the things that we want to manifest in our lives. And we're thinking about the family of God and God the creator. He's a creator. Created In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So that makes us creative beings. God has given us the ability to create. Before the foundation of the world, he opened his mind. He thought in his mind what he wanted the world to be like. Then he opened his mouth and spoke it, and it came into existence. He created it in his mind, what he wanted it to be. And God has given us that same ability to create our, our lives, what we want it to be. And people say, oh, yeah, yeah, you're saying that. It's, it's, it's easier said than done. But God is saying that we have the creative ability to do that. We've got to know that we have it. Yes, yes. And God is unlocking our creative creativity. And everything that he has put inside of us before the foundation of, world, of the world, he is now releasing that unto us, that creativity, that thing. And all of it is for the kingdom. Right. Because his kingdom is going to be established in the earth. Yes. And God is using us to establish his kingdom in the earth. Yes. Yes. But until we decide that the creativity and the things that God has put inside of us are for his kingdom, uh -huh. we'll never, never possess it. Yeah. It'll never manifest if we do not understand and we don't accept the fact that it's for the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all other things will be added unto us. Because we we're, we know, some of us know we have a creativity and we want to create the stuff that we want to create. <laughs> but God is saying, no, this creativity that I'm unlocking and releasing in the earth is for my kingdom. Yes. Wow. Yes. So once we establish that, then we'll see the abundance of creativity <clears throat> flowing. Because it's building the kingdom of God in the earth. Amen. So we've got to seek his kingdom first, first in his righteousness. So our God is strong and mighty. Yeah. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brother, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Mm -hmm. So our God's not weak. <laughs> There's nothing weak about him. He's strong. He's mighty. He's mighty in battle. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. So we've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So that means there's some things that we're going to have to take by force. Because the kingdom suffereth violent, and the violent take it by force. So when God releases that creativity in us, we've got to take by force. We've got to own it. We've got to receive it, own it, and then go out and manifest it in the earth for the kingdom of God. Yes. Philippians 4 and 8 says, and as Sister Deb Debbie so eloquently put it, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, those are the things that we need to think on. Because that's the thing that God wants manifested in the earth. Amen. So after we realize who we are and who God is, what we're supposed to be manifesting in the earth, will we go now and look into the mirror? Uh -huh. Or look at, go to the watering hole? Uh -huh. This is what we look like. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> So the creative, mighty, holy, strong, loving person that you see in this picture is what we're supposed to look like now. 
because that's the God that we see in the reflection of the mirror. That is your reflection with your new DNA. It's no longer what my mama's eyes were or my daddy's okay. head. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's now That's the, new me. the new breed yeah. that you're looking at in that mirror yeah. is what you are now becoming. Ah, look at you guys. The thing that you gaze upon the most mm -hmm. is the thing that you become. Yes. So what are your eyes on? What are you gazing on? There's a song that says, I want to be more like you. Yeah. And that's what we need to tell God. I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. And today, I'm going to leave you with this. When you wake up in the morning and you go to look in that mirror, mm -hmm. I want you to see the reflection of God in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Not the coal in your eyes. <laughs> you know, not your bed head. Uh -oh. What you're going to see in the mirror when you go home, when you get up in the morning, it's going to be God's reflection of you. Yeah. And so I want you to say, when you, when you look in that mirror, say, I am the reflection of God. I am the reflection of God. I am the reflection of God. Amen. 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 So that brings us to 1 Peter 2 and 9. Flow with it, Flow. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into yes. his marvelous light. Amen. I'm coming yes. from the Kingdom Constitution, Article 4. Yes. We are a chosen, chosen people, a royal priesthood. That makes us a new nation, mm -hmm. a new breed <laughs> among the people of this earth. Yes. Amen. Amen. We are a peculiar people mm -hmm. called the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And as Dr. Clark spoke in this article, she said that they don't know us because they don't know him. That's right. And we are set apart. Mm -hmm. He is on the inside of us. And we have the same testimony that Jesus had. Amen. When you see me, you see the Father. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because he lives inside of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I made this personal for me. Yeah. This is the article that stuck out the most for me. Amen. Amen. He lives in the inside of me. He is completing his work through me. And I have to tell the people, I have to let people see who he is in me. And I have to tell him who he is. So if I believe and come into my identity, my true identity, and the power of God that is resident on the inside of me, and realize who I really am, and begin to walk in that anointing, when I begin to put on Jesus Christ and get lost in his will and his plan for my life, that Everywhere I go, I will effect change. <laughs> so I will begin with my family. Mm -hmm. Effecting change. Yes. In my husband and in my son. Yes. That's my immediate family. Mm -hmm. And my family in the spiritual, spiritual um, aspect is those who do the will of my father. That's right. mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Those are my mother, my father, my sisters, and my brothers. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Uh, Deuteronomy 6, chapter 6, is about Moses when he proclaimed, The Lord our God is one. Right. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. And the children of Israel are commanded to teach their children. Yeah. And Moses exalts them to keep the commandments, testimonies, and statutes of the Lord <laughs> that they may prosper. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. So God was talking to Abraham during the time of Sodom, of Sodom and Gomorrah when he wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So he warned Abraham. Abraham went to his family and, and the people that were of promise, mm -hmm. and he gathered them together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he went to God and said, because he was willing, because Abraham, I'm sorry, excuse me, I don't got all the God wanted Abraham to offer up his son Isaac. Mm -hmm. He was, but he, Isaac wasn't the son of promise. But Abraham was willing to kill, to offer up Isaac. Mm -hmm. But God had a ram in the bush. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God wanted, because of Abraham wanting to sacrifice Isaac, God wanted to know if he had a man who would do what he wanted him to do in the earth. If you sow, you reap. Mm -hmm. So whatever you sow, you reap. Mm -hmm. So she posed a question. What is God after in you? Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to let go. Yes, Lord. He wants you to set your affections on things above. Yes, that's right. He wants to know if he can fellowship with you. Mm -hmm. When he wanted to destroy that city, Abraham said, What about what if there were 50 righteous? Mm -hmm. Would you be merciful unto them? Mm -hmm. Then she let us know that he wasn't intimidated by anything that's going on in your life. Mm -hmm. oh, that's right. Oh, so what's going on in your life? Mm -hmm. It really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. God is a generational God. Mm -hmm. In every situation, he will preserve his seed. Mm -hmm. She also says that he wants to put his DNA inside of you. Sanctify you. Because he wants you to be productive so that you can multiply. He can multiply through you. Yes, Lord. Yes. She also said that there are people in your family that's tied to Sodom and Gomorrah. Not doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing what they're, they were doing back in Sodom and Gomorrah time, but there are people that are tied to sin. <laughs> in Mark chapter 7, she was talking about how the Lord, because of yeah, what's in you flows inside of you to your family. And God will have mercy on them. But you have to pray for God to deliver them. Yes. Even as Lot's wife was destroyed, when she looked back after God said, don't look back. Right. Yeah. Right. What is it that will cause you to look back and lose your life? Jesus. Who is God to you? Do you believe? Where's your faith in him? Mm -hmm. Amen? But Lot didn't look back to see if his wife was back there or his children. <laughs> All he knew that God gave him a promise. <laughs> Amen? Amen? He told him to leave and don't look back. Forget about everything. Yes. Because the promise is before you, yes. not behind. 
Amen. <laughs> so she also said that we need to move. We need to move out of tradition. Yes. Because tradition will try to make the word of God of none effect in your life. Moses said, honor thy father and thy mother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you will have long life. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, mm -hmm. she said you will be killed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. She also talked about the average life expectancy, which is 25, 30 for young people. Amen. <laughs> but today, I ask God, there's so many young people that are dying. Why? I ask God, why? <laughs> and I heard in my spirit, if I don't take them now, their souls will be lost. And that thing break my heart. And I weep for the children. And I pray for the children that every soul will be saved. Yes. And that they will not die prematurely. Yes. Following the lust of the flesh. Because I have children, and I just ask God just to have mercy upon their soul. Yes. And to let them walk into their destiny. Yes. That they will not be lost. In 2 Timothy, y'all, I'm sorry, I'm always getting emotional. My heart is for children. Mm -hmm. It's just that I always want them to do right. I can see the path that they're going in. If I say something to them, it's because I love them. Amen. And I want them to do right. Amen. Yes, Lord. 2 Timothy 1 and 5, she spoke about, Paul was talking to Timothy and he was telling him how his mother and his grandmother were godly people and then how they trained him to be a godly man. And we need to train our children. Yes. So that they will not go astray. Yes. We need to be godly influences in their lives. And we have to be uh, accountable for what we do. But we can't blame our parents for what has gone on in our lives. Because we have to be accountable for our own lives. Right. Because everyone has to work out their own soul salvation with fear and tremble. So we have to make sure that we rear them in the way of God and things. Yeah. Show them God, live our lives in a God and man. And she also said that we need to repent where we are. Yes. And then ask God whatever is missing out of the training that I was supposed to have in my life. That he will lead me, he will heal me and fill me. And that he will teach me and lead me into my purpose. Because God can re cause recovery. Amen. She said that we spend most of our time, most of our lives, struggling. 
we need to ask him, tell him you want the life that you were promised and the liberty that you were promised in the Holy Ghost. Because he will lead you and he will guide you. Yes. She also said that we are promised liberty. And there is a recovery for the people of the kingdom in 1 Timothy 5 and 4. And she ended it with a prayer. We need to pray, Lord, I want the victorious life that you have promised me. Help me to get in the right posture. Help me to get in the right way so that your will, your life, and everything that you have ordained for me can begin to manifest in my life. <coughs> I am Deaconess Sean Gist, and I am empowering the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God that uh, he is just, nobody, as they say, nobody God but God. Right. Um, and his word is true. Uh, it's, a, well, I wouldn't say it's amazing, but uh, it, it's um, exciting to see that uh, God can use um, all of us and give us the same or the similar word. <laughs> and we're not in the same, you know, household or not in the same um area. So I, I thank God for that. Yes. As far as our own household, we're not in the same household, but we're in, in uh, kingdom life. Yes. And I thank God for that because he uh, actually is um, fitly joining us together. Mm -hmm. And he's bringing us to a place in him that uh, when one uh, is speaking a thing, then he can uh, speak to another and they stand up and continue <laughs> or finish what he's already spoken when he started speaking. Yes. Yes. And so I'm so grateful for that. Uh, I thank God for my leader, Dr. Clark. My topic is God is raising a new breed generation. Praise mm -hmm. God. And, and, and as I begin to, um, when I sat down and study that, uh, or when I received the assignment, I was like, whoo. And I said, okay, God, what is it that you would like for me to um, speak? And that was the topic uh, that stood out the most. Uh, and when I went in to look, uh, or uh, looked in uh, Webster's Dictionary and it defines uh, breed, usually that's associated with animals, plants, things of that nature. So I went with that. I was like, okay, breed. Um, but um, the definition of breed is a group of usually tame animals or plants most likely related by descent from common um, ancestors and visibly similar in most characters. And uh, it also went on to say a particular kind of dog, cat, horse, uh, those are the animals, um, a, kind of animal, a kind of animal that has been uh, produced by breeding. And so um, when I go back and I was like, well, Lord, how is that associated with the human nature as far as breeding? Uh, and then I begin to look a little further into the definition, and it says to take care of and teach a child that's actually growing up. And uh, when I, I also went in to take a look at, uh, there's a, a certain type of breeding, and uh, what stood out the most was um, the purebred. And when you look at a, a purebred animal, uh, those are the animals that are pretty much favored. They have favor over others because people want um, the animal. Yeah, right. They want purity and they want the best, in That's other right. words. And so, um, uh, purebred are those that have been bred up and um, up to purebred status as a result of using full blood. Mm. And uh, the animals wow. have um, they have wow. a breeding ground. 
And uh, the breeding um, takes place in situations that help um, or allow something to grow or develop or to be trained. And when you're breeding, when the breeding takes place, um, it causes reproduction, which is new birth. Okay. And uh, during the uh, reproduction, uh, reproduction is to kind of duplicate, copy. Um, it's actually uh, to, some, to resemble something. Um, and uh, so when you reproduce, you cre uh, it brings forth something of the same like or the same kind. And so when I started looking at it, I was like, okay, well, that's associated with the animals. And when you, uh, how does it uh, relate to a human nature or to humans? And uh, as I began to uh, study and look a little further into that, um, it stood out the most to me to say that we are a part of a specific, uh, a specific group.